This is the Bethel Business Podcast, brought to you by the Bethel Chamber of Commerce in Bethel, Connecticut, and produced by Smith Douglas Associates. Good morning. Today we are here with Dr. Stanley Kessler, DDS, here on Elizabeth Street. Good morning. Good morning, and thank you for coming down and allowing me to uh, to introduce myself and to say a few words about myself and uh, my dental practice. How long have you been in Bethel? I've been living and practicing in Bethel for 38 years. I've raised three children in Bethel. I'm originally from Brooklyn. I'm a graduate of James Madison High School. I got a bachelor's degree from Brooklyn College, a dental degree from New York University. And uh, after two years of serving as a dentist in the Air Force, I discovered Bethel. And I realized that Bethel would be, as a newlywed, a perfect fit for settling down, starting a practice, and raising a family. When I found Bethel and began inquiring in the town about locations and began to talk to people who were just so nice to me and so encouraging, I said, this is the place where we want to be. We, my, my wife, Penny, and I spoke about it, and we said, this is the place, and let's, let's not only you know, open up a practice here, but let's eventually find a place to, uh, to live in this town. You know, like I said, I never re- I've never regretted moving into Bethel. I have met the nicest people. This has become really a hometown. You know, the people from the, really from the greater Danbury area, because we, you know, I see people from, certainly from Bethel, but Danbury and Reading and Newtown and Brookfield and from areas further out, you know, it's, it's just a nice area to be in. The growth has been amazing from when we first moved up here to now, and uh, it, it's just been, it's just been a very nice experience. What made you decide to become a dentist? Well, that goes back to um, my childhood. My uncle was a dentist for many years out on Long Island. Going to his office and knowing him very well, that was something that uh, just appealed to me at that point. So probably from when I was a very young child, my goal was to go into dentistry and to emulate my, my uncle when I was at his office just seeing the joy that he got from treating patients also the uh, the love that the patient showed towards him was it was really a good feeling what made you decide on the Air Force well after getting out of dental school I wasn't ready to set up a practice I wasn't ready to join a practice I wanted more experience and a very good place to get experience was in the military. They, uh, I, I enlisted, worked with many other general dentists, was able to work. I was at a large base, Scott Air Force Base in Belleville, Illinois, for two years. Uh, they had a separate dental clinic with specialists that I was able to learn from, from general dentists, career officers I was able to learn from, and it was a very, very worthwhile two years that I spent in the, in the military. Since you've been practicing so long, how do you see the science of dentistry changing over the decades? Well, the dentistry that I was practicing, that I learned in dental school, and what I practiced when I first opened up is not the dentistry that we're practicing in 2017. The materials are different, the concepts are different, the theories are different, the, uh, the technology, which was not even a factor in the 1970s is now plays a major factor with uh, computers, digital x-rays, digital photos, and many, many other things. The, the, The technology is completely different. The materials are completely different. And it's important, of course, you know, to keep up with all that. How do you keep up with the constantly changing technology and science and research and... Well, that's changed also. I still go to many dental courses, dental meetings. Annually, I go up to the what they call the Yankee Dental Conference in Boston. Uh, it's a large dental meeting where you, they have uh, courses and classes, and you get to exhibit halls to see the new materials and the new technology that's coming out. There is a very good uh, series of, of courses that the Connecticut State Dental Association has every year. And what has become very important over the past decade, I would, I would guess, is uh, online learning. 
that did certainly did not exist many years ago. Now it now it does. If you want to see something up close and personal, there's there is uh, usually a uh, a class or a course you can take online or a video you can see online that's very informative. It doesn't replace classes. It doesn't replace courses. It doesn't replace meetings. But it's a wonderful adjunct to all that. Do you find dentistry easier now or more difficult? Different. <laughs> Very different than it was. Again, much more complicated than it was. The materials are different. There are more options for patients. Uh, there are more ways to save teeth. There are more ways to treat patients. Implants did not really exist 30 some odd years ago. Now it's a major factor treating gum disease, periodontal disease. Uh, the concepts, the techniques are different now. The options of materials are, are much different now. Patients' wants and needs are much different. The expectations of patients are much different now. And on the, um, on the business side, it's, uh, it's also, there's, well, even the business and clinical side, there is, uh, there are regulations now and there are um, compliance, both uh, infection control, there is security compliance, there's you know, OSHA and HIPAA, and then there's the dealing with insurance companies. It's There are a lot of dental clinics around mm -hmm. here like you. There are some solo practitioners. Mm -hmm. There are some chains. I see both in medicine, both clinical and dental, is becoming more almost commercial with various and sundry national chains. How do you differentiate yourself from the other dentists, both in the area, both independent and chain? As you said, there is an emerging new age of corporate dentistry. It's the big box, one size fits all concept, really. What I feel that I offer, the individual care, it's a family practice. Um, we truly do get to know our patients. Um, I have a wonderful staff. Most of them have been with me for many years, and we really get to know our patients, get to know our families, and can follow them through the years and, and continue to maintain on a, a very consistent basis their, 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 their dental health. That's something that I don't think that a big corporate dental clinic can, can provide to, to patients. Where do you find most of your new patients? I see you're very active on social media mm -hmm. and you're active in the community. Where, where do you get your referrals? Many, many of them come from existing patients. That when we, we always ask our patients, so how did you hear about our office? Who referred you to our office? Most often it is from patients who have referred either family members or friends or co-workers to the office. Uh, we get some inquiries, of course, from social media, social media. Talking about, you know, going back to a previous question, social media plays an important role in not only dental practices, but in all of health care now, just so patients can keep up with our practice and we keep up with, keep up with our patients. So they, they come from there, and then uh, there are patients who just, you know, stop in and, and, and ask you know, future patients who want to you know, meet us. They, they pass by us, they, they stop in, they know where we are here in downtown Bethel, and patients will, future patients actually, will stop in and say hello and ask questions, and hopefully they, you know, they make an appointment and come in. Do you see your patients now, as opposed to back in the day, better educated on dental hygiene when they first come in? Or is this something you still need to teach each generation as they come in? Oh, every everyone needs a little, some you know education. You know, you, um, patients are more well informed now. There are so many so many outlets for them to get information. There are so many more questions that they have that they didn't have before. There's all kind of information coming at them. You know, certainly when they come in, they are they receive thorough you know, dental hygiene education, you just basic home care, but also when we present treatment plans and treatment options, that's a good time also to educate patients about, again, all the different options that they have at this point um, for taking care of problems both 
both big and small. What are some of the challenges running a small independent dental practice as opposed to if you had sold out to one of the (laughs) corporate dentist chains? (laughs) And become a one-size-fits-all dentist. Mm -hmm. Running a small solo dental practice has a number of challenges. It's just keeping on track with everything that is changing in dentistry, keeping up to date, certainly dealing with the insurance companies, you know, insurance companies, as they say, you know, can't live with them, can't live without them. I don't think they're talking about insurance companies <laughs> at them, but it's very appropriate today dealing dealing with, with them. You don't have the impact that a corp- corporation has, but the challenges are not as important, really. I'd rather spend the time, you know, taking care of my patients and leave, you know, the, ch- the challenges for after hours and taking care of the paperwork that needs to be done. Again, it's, it's, it's the patient that really counts first. You know, you deal with all the other issues that arise as a solo practitioner. Yeah, that, that comes after hours. I have a wonderful staff who, can, who takes care of a lot of issues that arise and, and um, that most of them not even treatment related. So we, 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 we deal with it and bring the patient in on it and, and it, we usually get a very, very successful outcome. With all the new tools and technologies coming out, how do you decide on when, when to bring it into your, your own practice? Okay, good question. There is always, they're always putting out new materials, new equipment. Um, I always tell patients when they ask about it, because they may see something online or read something in the paper, what about this and what about that? And I always tell them, I'm never the first one but I'm never the last one either. You know, with all the materials come, that come out, some of them, many of the manufacturers just put out new materials, and uh, two or three years later, they you never hear from them again. So you have to make sure that any materials, any techniques, any equipment has a track record. And that's keeping up, again, with continuing education, going to meetings. Certainly, I have a good core of colleagues who we sit and discuss our, you know, our practices and discuss what they're doing and what I'm doing, and you get a lot, you know, you get a lot of information sitting down at lunch with, with, with colleagues and friends and seeing what's working for them, what's, what's not working for them, and what, what, what they've adopted, what I've adopted into the practice. So it's a, it's a big combination of things. And um, like I said, I'm not going to be the first one, you know, when the when a rep comes into the office to to try something, but I'm I'm not. But if it's successful, I'm not going to be the last one either. What are some things that you wish your patients would pay attention to? What certain factors do you see over and over and over again? Or are people still not flossing, or are they still not reaching the back teeth? What are <laughs> what are some of the things that you see over and over and over again? Well, <laughs> every yeah. You know, well, flossing is always an issue, of course, and we tell people, you know, but what, what, what my hygienists say, it's, it tell, they tell patients all about the string, yeah, cleaning between the teeth. But uh, what we have found, and I think any dentist uh, who follows patients over a number of years will, uh, will tell you is that consistency always works. Consistency in home care, consistency in dental visits, consistency in just maintaining your know, good good dental care the patients you have the least amount of issues with over time are patients who come in on a very regular basis you can catch small problems before they come big problems and before they become major treatment with a major expense I think that that's that's the bottom line it's like it's like with, with anything you know just maintenance is is always will work the best if a teenager came to you today and said, I'm thinking about becoming a dentist. Mm-hmm. What are some recommendations? What are some advice you would give a dental student? Uh, well, even before dental school is take, uh, as an undergraduate in college, take some science courses, biology, chemistry, and so on. Talk to dentists, visit offices, visit dental schools get a feel for what goes on on a day-to-day basis in, in a dental office and see if you're that kind of person. It's dentistry is still a very much of a hands-on profession and it's also as much as a hands-on clinically it's also hands-on in dealing with patients. 
you know, it's, you know, pe you know people, you know, people will say, you know, that, that they love to come into the office, they love to see us, but uh, nothing, you know, the old saying is nothing personal, you know, nothing personal, Dr. Kessler, but, you know, dot, 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 you know, mm -hmm. fill in the blank. And so you have to have the personality that will lend itself to dealing with, again, dental, not only the dental issues, but the emotional issues of going to the dentist. Like I said, it's very important here that we make our patients feel comfortable coming to the office. That's something that I really impress upon the staff, and, 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 and they're wonderful. I've had uh, staff working here for many, many years. We work together as a team, handing off the patients so that they know that there's consistency in the way that we, that we practice here and enjoying things. So that is really important, no matter where you work as a dentist, no matter what, how you practice dentistry, even if you get into you know, specialized care, whether it be periodontics, endodontics, orthodontics, it's still the personal relationships that are so very important. How do you handle people with extreme dental anxiety? Well, there are patients who have postponed dental care for years. There are patients who will come in initially be very, very apprehensive. And the idea initially is to desensitize these patients, get, get them in for exams and talk to them and short procedures, make sure that they're comfortable and they can handle the, you know, just sitting in a dental chair, whether it be for a short appointment, for a long appointment. And there always will be some patients who just cannot, for some reason, emotionally, the past history, their emotional makeup, just can't sit in a dental chair. There are offices I can re refer them to that can provide you know, sedation and care to do the dentistry. Not often, not usually not often, but, uh, but there are always options for taking care of them. What are the differences as teeth age that you see among your aging clients? That is an excellent question. One of the challenges of dentistry now are elderly patients. As patients age, even patients who have been coming in for many, many years and have been stable, what we tend to see is, number one, many medications cause a drop in the saliva flow. The saliva flow has been referred to as the bloodstream of the mouth. And when the saliva flow goes down, that can lead to tooth decay. As patients age, their dexterity, they're not, they don't have the dexterity that they had. They have difficulty in day-to-day -day home care. Also, and I, we always tell patients that the dentistry that we do, unfortunately, nothing that we do lasts forever. That as time goes on, fillings begin to fail, crowns begin to fail. It's the aging process, tre treating elderly patients. And that is done through modifying their day-to-day -day home care, using saliva substitutes to keep their mouth moisturized, taking care of their needs, again, regular care so that small problems don't become large problems, and, you know, doing replacement dentistry as necessary as, as they can handle it to maintain their teeth. It's one of the great challenges of dentistry, it really is at this point. Something that we didn't see, again, a generation ago, because patients now m keep their teeth and which two or three generations ago, you know, we we're making many more dentures, many more partial dentures. They were losing their teeth. People looked at it as, 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 as I get older, I'm going to lose my teeth. That's not the case now. As you get older, you, may, you have issues that need to be dealt with, but the goal is to keep your teeth. When should new parents bring their kids in for their first visit to the dentist? Well, we encourage early, early dental care. In fact, new Moms and dads, we talk to them about infant dental care. We talk to them about keeping the gums clean and allowing the teeth to come in in a clean mouth. We encourage them to bring them in as early as uh, the age of two when their initial primary or baby teeth are completely in. If they have any questions or want to see how to do home care, they can bring them in even earlier. And we have a lot of tips and tools for keeping infants' teeth clean. So anytime really between the age of one and definitely two to two and a half should be the first visit to the dentist. Do you see an increase in the request for cosmetic dentistry? Oh yeah, that, that's been a big part of it. Tooth whitening, tooth colored fillings, for, certainly on the front teeth, but 
now on back teeth it, it's been it, it's been an explosion really it's, it's been fueled by um, again by social media and by advertising and uh, tooth whitening and uh, doing cosmetic work front teeth back teeth has been a, an ongoing part and growing part of the practice for, for a number of years now absolutely people want to have a nice smile they, they they look on magazine covers they look on television they look online and they see glowing white teeth so <laughs> and they come in asking about it absolutely are people still concerned about the composites used for fillings? Well, we've been placing more and more and more tooth-colored white fillings on back teeth. You know, years ago there was an issue, which was not a real issue, about uh, the safety of silver amalgam fillings. That's not really much of an issue. There, there, there is no issue as far as placing silver fillings on back teeth. Perfectly, perfectly safe, perfectly fine, but Having said that, the trend for people is to come in and want white fillings on their back teeth. So as the number of white fillings, tooth colored fillings on back teeth increase, the number of silver fillings we're placing decreases. Uh, there's still a place, there's still a, uh, it's still appropriate in some instances to place silver fillings on back teeth, but most of the time, if a patient would like to have a white filling on back teeth, it's very, very doable. And we can, we can do that most of the time. Do you see adult braces also being used more? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, on a personal note, my wife now has braces on her teeth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, absolutely. Not just for teenagers anymore. It's not, you know, many, many, many adults have opted to, you know, to get a consultation see an orthodontist to straighten teeth out, to move teeth around, improve their smiles. It's been a trend for a number of years. My, my classic case is a number of years ago, I had a patient who was in his early 80s, patient for a number of years. We got to talking one, one day and he said, you know, that front tooth that sticks out, I, I've never liked that tooth. I've never liked it. He, I said, well, would you be interested in having orthodontic treatment? I said, we can send you to an orthodontist, see what can be done about taking that tooth out, moving the other teeth in, and um, it's certainly doable. He got the consultation, removed the tooth, moved the other teeth into position. He's almost 90 years old now. He's the happiest man you'd ever want to meet. <laughs> so yes, it, it's you, you're really, truly never too old for, um, for braces. In fact, what has become very, very um, popular for minor tooth movement with adults are what, what the uh, so-called invisible braces, the trays that are used that are worn for minor tooth movement to straighten out the teeth where not major treatment is not indicated, has the so-called Invisalign. Invisalign is the brand name, but that's become you know, the, the generic term for it. It's very, very popular at this point. Number of patients, adults, who uh, are straightening their teeth now. So, what else do you do besides dentistry? Uh, well, you may see me scooting around town on my little red Vespa. You know, I take it out and I just ride around, just around town here. We ha we have children who live in Washington D.C., so we're in travel down to Washington to visit. In Boston, we travel up to Boston to visit. And Manhattan, we're in and out of Manhattan, constantly visiting my daughter. So we, we keep very, very busy, uh, active in community events. You know, I've been for many years a uh, sponsor of the, I've been a sponsor of the uh, July 4th John DeMille Firecracker Road Race. I've been a longtime board member and, in fact, former president of the Bethel Visiting Nurse Association. Sort of job-related, but also a lot of fun is visiting preschools and kindergartens, giving giving little talks to the kids and providing consultation to them. For many years, I sponsored t-ball leagues and um, winter basketball leagues in town. So, well, teams actually, not the whole league. <laughs> <laughs> so we keep very, very busy. I have been a, uh, a long time Mets fan. Um, if you come into my office, you'll see that. You'll notice it in the posters and in the clocks and in the... Um, and just ask me, okay? I'm a loyal Mets fan, especially this year. Um, you need to be a loyal Mets fan, 
but uh, I always feel that if not this year, then next year is going to be the year for the New York Mets. <laughs> what other sports do you like? Okay. Um, I follow sports. I, I was, in my previous years, a runner, a jogger, and I, um, I actually uh, ran in the New York City Marathon for seven years in a row. Not among the not among the uh, the elite, but I was in the vast mob that you see crossing the bridge, somewhere in the crowd there, and uh, that was that was a uh, wonderful wonderful experience for me all seven years in fact, until I got to the point where I said you know, time for the time for the younger crowd to take my place. <laughs> Anything else you would like to share with the residents of Bethel? <laughs> After many years of dentistry, I still love what I do. I enjoy keeping people healthy, having them feel comfortable in my dental office setting. My main goal is making people feel that going to the dentist should be a pleasant, positive experience. I very much enjoy meeting new patients. I especially enjoy meeting kids, seeing kids, having a good time in my office. In fact, Many of the children that I see now are children, even grandchildren, of the little kids that I treated when I started out. Uh, I provide general dental care and have a great resource of local specialists when the need arises. I really you know, enjoy what I'm doing. I enjoy living in the town of Bethel. I enjoy the community. It's been Everything has worked out very much the way that I had hoped for. I am very grateful for, you know, for everything that we have here. A shout out to my wife of... 39 years, who <laughs> it has been a big part of my life, and my children, of course, and everyone in, in the community who has been very supportive, my practice, and our family. Thank you very much. Thank you. You can find Dr. Kessler's practice at 14 Elizabeth Street in Bethel, Connecticut. For more information, call 203-797-8070 or visit his website at www.doccessler.com. Thank you for listening to the Bethel Business Podcast. For more information about the Bethel Chamber of Commerce, call 203-743-6500 or visit discoverbethelct.com. If you run a business in the Bethel area and are interested in being a guest on this podcast, contact Smith Douglas Associates at 203-628-2606.